loosenness. It kind of feels like a nice way to um, end uh, an email. Just side point, really. Um, <clears throat> so lying down on the floor, feeling the weight of your body. The posterior part of your body that's in contact with the floor and the floor helping for you to define that sensation, maybe shape of the posterior part of your body. And trying to, or just working towards slowing down your mind's chatter and that skill and ability to be able to slow down quiet is part of our ongoing practice and exploration. The quiet mind. Doesn't matter if thoughts come, they come, they go. Just try not to give them too much energy. And taking your awareness now to the movement of your belly, diaphragm descends, belly bulges, there's a softening and a recoil, inhale, pause, exhale, pause, Just for a little while, focusing on the movement of your belly. Smooth inhale, smooth exhale, smooth beginning part of your inhale, smooth middle, smooth end. Pause, smooth beginning of your exhale. If I've just said that, it's the inhale but try and have it a smooth beginning, middle and end. You don't have to have a massive full breath, but just here to get you present, maybe more grounded. Quiet mind. And then taking your awareness to your rib cage, part of your rib cage that is in contact with the floor, the posterior part of your rib cage. And initiate the movement of breath from this part of your anatomy as you breathe in. Probably feel a little bit more tension as it connects with the floor. Just exploring how conscious or not conscious for you, this area of your anatomy is, the posterior part of your rib cage, the inhale, pause and the exhale. Keep softening inside as much as you can. Now taking your awareness to the lateral side of your ribcage between your side of your body and your arms. And initiate your breath going laterally, inhale. The exhale is just a softening and a recoil. Inhale, pause, exhale, pause. And now taking your awareness to the front part of your rib cage and initiate the movement of your rib cage, front part, anterior part, allowing that movement 
to accommodate air coming into your lungs, the inhale, the pause, and the exhale. Smooth, gentle, easeful. And now you give your rib cage as one functioning unit, the front, back, sides, up, down. And allow the movement as much as possible through the whole of your thoracic cage. The inhale movement goes up, down, sideways, back, front, exhale, just to recoil, soften in. Important just to have some of that versatility available in your lungs and in your rib cage. And now imagine that there's a ball just below your xiphoid process, deep in your belly, just below your rib cage. And imagine that there's a ball or a sphere that as that ball expands, it goes upwards, down sideways, front and back, allowing for the freedom of movement both in your belly and in your rib cage. And don't be too particular about focusing on one area. Just see where your breath takes you. And try and allow it to incorporate both thoracic and belly movement. The inhale, pause, and exhale, pause, quietening down, becoming more present. And then just for a moment, just allow your breath to do whatever it's naturally going to do now. And just see what happens to it. Is it more abdominal? Is it more thoracic? How quiet, shallow, is it smooth? Is it showing signs of agitation? Whatever it is, is okay too. And then mindfully in your own way, let's come to standing. We're gonna start off doing a little bit of <clears throat> Qigong. Taking your time. Being mindful with your movements. <clears throat> and when you're standing, start off standing with your feet parallel and about a fist width apart. Who usually stands, one that we've been exploring. <clears throat> And just feeling your contact of the heel on the floor, sides of your feet, balls of your feet, heels, sides, balls. And just allow yourself to feel that weight of your body, feel that contact with the floor, that yield, and then the receiving the support from the yield. And just take yourself on a journey through your body, feeling your feet, ankles, knees soft, buttocks soft, thighs, lower back soft, whole of your spine, shoulders, arms, and maybe your chin very gently tucked into your chest, but just a movement towards that takes you a little bit more internal. Brain soft, quiet. 
And now allow yourself just to oscillate back and forth a little bit, just a tiny bit. Feeling change in the fabric of your body to stop you falling forward, stop you falling back. The movements don't need to be great, just enough to give you a sense of what happens to your muscles, your ligaments, the fascia, your joints. And then come back to a place that for you feels neither forward nor back. Feet, soft ankles, knees, soft. Buttocks, lower back, upper back, shoulders. Jaw very slightly open. And just a little bit of movement from left to right. Feeling when you're leaning to one side, how that line of energy and connection, very different, defining a bit more sensation side of your body all the way to your hip. Feeling what happens, sensing what's happening with your knees as you go from one side just a little bit. And then come back to a place that now feels for you neither forward nor back nor left nor right. Ankles, knees, buttocks, shoulders, jaw, arms by the sides of your body, and just a little bit of space between your arms as well. <clears throat> and we're going to start off with lifting the sky. So if you're familiar with it, please just go ahead. The first thing that I do is I bend my head forward, my fingers are pointing towards each other, palms facing the floor. And as I lift up, I'm breathing in, looking through my fingers. On an inhale, and I pause when my arms are upright, I push up, and then I exhale, coming down. Same again, inhale. Exhale. And the exhale is through your mouth, inhale through your nose. And maybe just think about or feel the work that you're doing. Try and make it effortless. So maybe imagine in your arms are floating up in water so that you don't have to put too much physical exertion into this. And when you have that sensation of just floating up, just allow the movement to do, to move you. And taking the effort. Allow the movement to happen. Inhale up, pause, push, exhale down. The form for the way that we're exploring it now is not the most important thing. The idea is just to allow the movement a bit more freedom within the lifting of the sky. And then maybe a couple more times and then when your arms are then next by your sides, to come back to standing, feeling what that feels like, a bit of space between your arms, side of your body. Come back to your feet, ankles, shafts of your lower leg, knees, shafts of your upper leg, hips, pelvic girdle, lumbar spine, thoracic, Shoulders, arms, skull. So there's something that you can do just to adjust your skeletal position so you can let go a bit more of some of the muscles that you're holding onto, your default holding of muscles. Quiet, fine. Then we do carry in the moon. Looks like this if you just need a bit of familiarity to it. 
I bend forward my body. On an inhale, I'm bringing my hands up, they're cupped. I pause here with my breath, and then I exhale, coming down. Inhale. Arms up. Exhale. And if you have any physical issues or something that's going on, please modify it so that it works for you. If you can't lift your shoulders up fully, it really doesn't matter. It's how we're doing things, creating new pathways, new understandings of the way that we work. So freedom of movement. <coughs> And then a couple more times, and then come back again to standing. Feeling what that feels like. Is it different? Is it easier? Is it harder? And I'm going to pass over to Kate now, too. Great, thank you. So I'd just like to go into some gentle rotations of the joints. So just take your wrists and circle and move your joints. So with liver movement, it's about the free flow of ki throughout the body and the joints are like bridges where energy has to shift from one place to another. So it's one area where there's lots of acupuncture points, but it's an area where we often get stuck ki. So we want to be thinking with the movements about creating space. So all the time about, I want to create space in my wrist joints. And then if you've got the balance, take one foot and rotate an ankle as well. If you haven't, don't worry. Find a wall and rotate one wrist and one ankle. And then the other way with your, so you're really going slowly with your joints just because you're visualizing the bones. So all those small bones at the top of your foot, the tarsals, you want to be thinking about air, space, key can flow and blood can flow through the space. So key is information. So you want to think about all that space, change feet. So the energy can move through the bones, through the joints. So you might notice your elbows are coming in a bit, not just your wrist, your whole of your arm. Just allow that to happen. And then the joints the other way, take the circling the other way. Don't rush it, just think space. Great. And then we're going to do shoulders. So just bringing, breathing in. So we're breathing into this lung one area at the front as we breathe in. As we breathe out, drawing our scapula together at the back. So really opening your shoulders. So the gallbladder meridian runs through the big muscle at the top of our shoulders where we hold lots of tension. So this is a place where that free flow of ki can get stuck. You get tight shoulders, which can lead to headaches, tension headaches, migraines. So really keeping that movement in the shoulders is great. Allow the breath to move through the muscle. And then one more going backwards. And then come forwards. So feel your upper body coming into the movement as well as the joint, the ball and socket joint of the shoulders. Feel your whole arm can move. So you might feel some warmth for some of the key that might have been stuck in those muscles is released. Good. Lovely. Take your hand to as a kidney point on the bladder really. It's a waist height. If you can see the waist height, just take your hands to waist height and then just draw them out. A couple of fingers width to where your thumb just settles in. This is waist level. 
and then just circle your hips. So you can start off with slow movements, just beginning to feel the bones of your pelvis. And as you come to the sides, you feel your hip bones, bigger ball and socket joint. And again, thinking about the space in your sacrum, your pelvic floor, the muscles of your pelvic floor. Make it bigger, circle right out to the side. So you're getting a side bend. Just warming up the body. Did we go in the other direction? Can't remember. Yeah, in both directions. You might feel your neck crunching and moving as you move your pelvis. It's like the bottom of your spine opens, relates to the top of your spine. So don't sort of judge that, just notice and observe if there's crunking in your neck, like mine's crunking. Good, and then our knees, just bring our knees together. Feet together, knees together, and just open the knees in a circle. So you're getting an ankle rotation as well as the knee rotation. And the other way. And then have a little squat, just feel your knees bend and flex. And then slowly on an out breath, just open the back of your knees slightly. Just waking up your hamstrings. And again, flex your knees. And on an out breath, open the back of your knees. Good. Fantastic. And then come up. So all our joints, <clears throat> a little bit more open but just have a shake just shake out your hands so shaking is fantastic for our nervous system <clears throat> it's great for moving tension from the body it's great for getting the key moving to every cell so just imagine you're getting all that blood and energy down to every little finger all the cells our liver key is responsible for the energy that moves throughout every cell in our body to try and feel it moving to your fingers, through your wrists, and then your forearms, and your elbows, and your upper arms. And then just bring your shoulders in. <sighs> Let some out breath. Move any stress and tension out of the body. With, uh, let your face go, jaw, cheeks, uh, torso. And then your booty, shake your booty, get those buttock muscles, get the muscles, all those deep muscles just woo! Feel your torso going, yeah. Fantastic. And then a bit of a leg shake, hokey pokey. Shake your feet off the end of your ankles. If you're feeling energetic, you can flick them. You just want to be gentle, you can just move your toes. Again, trying to get the blood and the key moving through the bones in the feet, down to each toe. Shake, 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 and then feel those calf muscles loose. All the blood, every little cell. Key moving through it. And the other one. Such a good thing for, um, to shake for your nervous system. It really clears clears tension from the body and then one just a bit free form do your own thing shake your shoulders make a noise if you want to good Okay, so as you come back to standing, you probably feel key, energy, 
all around you. Just enjoy that sense of the movement outside of you as well as inside of you. I was struck by what Paul said about with kindness, um, thinking about the, the liver and the gallbladder meridian because their function is about moving the flow of key throughout the body. And the wood energy of liver and gallbladder is very strong. It's tree energy. So a tree is strong and stable yet flexible. But it's that, that plant kingdom has a really strong uprising energy. And when it gets stuck, or if it gets stuck, it's a powerful force. And I was thinking about sometimes when we stretch the liver and gallbladder, they can feel very tight. We move, joints can be stuck. We're moving the meridians, they can feel quite tight. So as we're doing the work on our bodies to release that tightness in the liver and gallbladder, it can sometimes habituate there because its function is to flow freely. So the stuckness can happen there to be kind to ourselves rather than try and move it, to be soft and kind with that, I think is really important. And also when we're feeling irritability, that is a sign of liver key imbalance. If we're chronically angry, that'll bring an imbalance into our liver. If, we, if we've got a liver imbalance, feelings of irritability and emotion will come up. So it, it goes both ways but to not fix on the irritation. So if we're feeling stuck with being locked in or stuck with being lied to or angry about being lied to, whatever it is, to not focus on that irritability, but to come into being kind with ourselves, I think is really key here. It's really important to take that kindness into the self-care and the work you're doing with Paul, with moving the body softly. Does that, I don't know, does that make sense? I've just muted you now, Kate. So you can, okay, that's great, awesome. Let's, um, let's just continue our exploration of um, the relationship with bones and ligaments. So let's carry on standing just a wee while. So to continue the story, to, or just to let me know that chi and ki are the same things, that ki is more Japanese and chi is more Chinese. <clears throat> and if you, so come back to standing again. And I just want to explore a little bit of, and we've done this before about the foot or our feet. So take your awareness to the soles of your feet, the ball of your feet, and just allow a little bit of more uh, moving your body so that you feel more of your connection with your heels. And then allow your energy to shift a wee bit so that you feel the energy more on the lateral sides of your feet. And then if you shift your energy to your toes, balls of your feet, and more the inside of your feet. And just keep coming back to, well, look at that as a cycle of three places to have your contact with the floor, the heels, sides, balls, and just allow yourself that exploration. The ball of the foot is the first part that makes contact with the floor. Sides of your feet is for stability, and you probably can feel that. And then when you come to the front of your feet, this is the flexible part of your feet that then allows you to propel forwards. So your grounding contact, first contact, the stability that's afforded to you from the lateral sides of your feet, and then that movement to propel yourself forwards. So just explore those places. Where do you know you reside? Do you reside more in your heels? Do you reside more on the lateral part? Is that more familiar? Or that notion of leaning forward, ready to go and move forward into the world? Or just move forward to walk? Okay. 
And while you're doing this exploration, just feel your contact also with your ligaments. So the sensation of ligaments is very different from the sensation of bones and muscles. There's, if you imagine the guide rope on the tent has some tightness to it. So engaging your ligaments has that kind of taut quality. And the reason why we're looking at ligaments here is that the liver rules over the ligaments. Liver and gallbladder, the energy around that is the energy of anger. The liver is the planner. Gallbladder is the decision maker. So any plan, regardless of how big or small it is, ultimately that job of the liver. And the gallbladder is the decision maker. So any decision that happens, ultimately the job of the liver, sorry, the gallbladder. So we're going to make a, the plan is that we're standing up, exploring these qualities, and we're going to make a decision to start to make a movement into stepping. But what I'd like you to explore, if this works for you, is just the stepping back and forth, but actually not propelling yourself off. And just to feel those sensations of what it means. <clears throat> so let me readjust that. <clears throat> so I'm just going to imagine that I'm walking off, but I'm actually not going to walk. So my front foot is heel outside of my foot, and then the ball of my foot and the middle of my foot ready to propel myself off. So just explore though that movement. You might wobble a bit, you might want to widen your foot stance, might help you. But you have that first place of grounding, then the stability, which is really important, and then propelling yourself forwards. and then swap over legs and feet. <clears throat> Again, think about that heel, the first sensation, outside of your feet, balls of your feet. <clears throat> and then with that in mind, Start taking, a, decide, make the decision to take a few steps and seeing how you move, seeing what it's like to feel that grounded nature of sensation with your heel, that stability of your outside of your foot, and then all that information that goes to your brain to get you to move off ball of your foot, front of your foot. and then just come back and you don't really have to walk far, but just to feel that relationship between stability and flexibility of your feet. And then just come back to standing in your upright in stance for a little while, feeling what that feels like, that connection that you have now with the floor. So feel the floor, allow yourself to yield into the floor, and now receive that support. And are you able to receive that in your whole body? And imagine just also a little bit of reaching from the top of your skull, just adding maybe some more space in your frame, but still all the time feeling the support, receiving the support that you had. And when we explored this a few weeks ago, that notion of receiving support was pretty profound for me to be focusing on that. Or 
And then I'm going to pass back over to Kate. So I'd like to explore the meridians of gallbladder and liver a little bit. So just we're going to start just by waking them up and moving the chi through them through tapping. So um, on our heads, the yang meridians on our heads, we can use our fingertips. Just tap around your head. So the, the top of your head, but the sides of your head, where you often get a, a gallbladder type headache or a more migraine type headache, that's where the gallbladder meridian runs. So to disperse any tension or tiredness or like a feeling of fullness in the head, just tap all around the scalp. A little bit of a tension in the top, just above your eyebrows, the front of your eyebrows there. Sides of your head from your temples, the end of your eyebrow, behind your ears. And then tap under the occiput, that bony ridge at the top of your spine, the bottom of your skull. Tap under there. Just gently with your fingers, but just a Enough to just move the chi, if there's any chi in those points that needs to move on a little bit. A little bit stuck. It's another bridge for all the meridians that have to get up to our head and down through our neck. And then take a hand and just squeeze the back of your neck. So your fingers are on one side and the base of your palm on the other side. Just squeeze. back of your neck, get your fingers into the side of your neck, that big muscle, gallbladder meridian, liver meridian, travel near there. Then swap hands, do the other side. If you want to move your neck and your head, we didn't rotate it when we were Rotating our joints, so maybe now just move your neck as you squeeze. If there's any areas that just feel a little bit stuck in the stretch, just hold that, soften into it a little bit. Everything to be soft, soft and flowing. Just use your hand, spot back to the other one. Good. And then work into your face. So the, you work into your masseter muscles, your jaw muscles. This is a place where we can get really stuck with our liver key. If we're frustrated, we might hold it in our jaw. If we're not able to express something, or anger can hold in this muscle. So work your fingers in quite strongly to move any stagnation that's holding in those muscles. All around the jaw where your mouth opens. Work your fingers quite deeply to move any stagnation into your jaw, massage along your jaw. Top of your gums, work through the top of your lips into your gums. And then under your eyes, just smooth under your eyes. Down the sides of your nose. You can breathe in and just smooth down your nose. Yeah. And then press your fingers into your forehead. So pressing them in and then drawing them out. So press them in and draw them out to the side. So it's like easing out any tension in your forehead. Pressing in and then smoothing out. And then just come to the temple area and just massage there. Our gallbladder meridian starts here. 
Good. Okay. And then we're going to just tap the meridian. So you're going to have a loose fist and a loose wrist. And just start on the top of one shoulder. There's a big gallbladder point in the shoulder. Just tap in there, release any of the tightness in the muscles here. Just tap, 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 tap. And then we can just go down the arms a little bit, up the back, and coming down the yin meridians in the soft front part of the arm, and then we come up the yang meridians at the back of the arm. Keep coming back to the shoulder. You can use um, your, you don't have to use a fist, you can use fingers or you can use a palm. You can come into your armpit, where our heart meridian starts. Down to our little finger. And then up the back, tap the back of the shoulder here. And then just come across your lungs, come across the top of your chest. And to the other shoulder, tap into the top of the other shoulder. Again, just feeling if it feels tight, just Think of it dispersing and moving, any knots in the muscle there. Think of it softening and melting. Tension leaving. And then down the arm. Up the back of the arm. Into the armpit. Good, and then around the hara, so around the abdomen. So we come up the right hand side, we're following the intestines down the left hand side. So the liver organ is in under the right hand side ribs. We can tap in there, just stretch the side slightly. Stomach on the left. Energetically in Chinese medicine, we see the liver residing down here in the bottom, bottom segment of the hara. It's good to, it's a great exercise to just, on a physical level, moving digestion, on an energetic level, helping the key be balanced in this area. And then comes the sides, our gallbladder um, comes down the side of the, of the ribs here, so just tap down and then into the buttocks. Big gallbladder point, bouncing ring, right in the middle of the buttocks there. Really good if we've got energy stuck in the gallbladder and really in our head, creating headaches, just bring it down by tapping the buttocks. And then down the side of the legs. Down the side. And so you're going down the stripe of the seam of your trouser leg. And then up the inside. And then the outside. Gallbladder comes down the outside. And the liver meridian comes up the inside, into the groin, and then up. And then let's just work our feet slightly, just to go on from that sense we've got of, with Paul of finding the balance in our feet. If you roll your toes, I don't know how well you can see me, but curl your toes like a ballerina going on to points. So you're sort of stretching out those long bones at the front of the foot. And this, if you bring your focus onto your big toe, this is really working the liver meridian. So it might be a little bit sore and stiff. It's quite common for people to get gout, stuck, sort of liver, key not moving. And then just take it to the side, so bend the side of the foot. So that's sort of opening up gallbladder through the side of the foot. So just putting your weight onto the little toe and then just feeling if that energy goes up the side of the leg. And then just rotate your, I don't know if you can see me well, just rotate your toes. Go as though you're going on to tiptoes and then just circle, yeah, circle. So again, just gallbladder meridian goes through the ankle, gets tight in the ankle joint, just free it up. So 
and how good your mic is, or my mic is, my ankles crunching, like my neck crunched. Both directions. Good. And then just notice, without judgment or comparison, just out of interest, just notice how different your feet feel on the ground. The one that you sort of open the joints a little bit. Is it sinking more into the ground? Does it feel more open? Is there more sense of being connected to the ground on that side? Has it affected the level of your hips as you sort of sink into the ground more on one side? And then the other side, roll your toes over as though you were a ballerina going on to points, just flexing your toes. So you'll feel a stretch probably up the front of your foot, the long metatarsals. And thinking about that big toe where the liver meridian begins. And then the gallbladder, just open that in the foot by just leaning onto your little toe, down the side, the outside, stretching the outside. Paranoid every time I say stretch, because Paul doesn't use that word. Opening the outside of the foot. It's great to be made aware of it. And then just rotate. So you're on tiptoes. Just creating space again, moving the key, chi, going in both directions. And then come to standing and yeah, notice it doesn't take much, you know, it's great. We can just, just do a few little movements in our feet and we've got this whole new relationship to the ground the way we stand, we can bring energy down from our head if we've got a headache or insomnia or everything's up here. Just working our feet can really, really be powerful and effective. So I feel completely different in my feet now just from those few stretches. Working the feet. Are you ready to go, Paul? Okay, cool, awesome. Um, let's go to kneeling down. <clears throat> if you have trouble kneeling, you can stay in the chair, that's really fine. Um, if you have a little bit of trouble kneeling and uh, a bolster. So comfort is in really important here too. It's not about whether you can kneel or not kneel really how comfortable that is. But it is, it's awesome how um, you don't really have to do a lot to start changing patterns and changing the energy. So classically in the bone yoga, we start off doing some rotation of the spine, looking at the way that the spine works, that the, the lumbar spine, vertical in its orientations, which means that I don't, can't rotate much because the way that the bones are joined together. And then when I come up to my thoracic spine, they're oblique, which allows for a bit more rotational movement, restricted slightly by the thoracic cage. And rotation of my neck is the easiest because there's, I don't have abdominal organs and I don't have my thoracic cage restricting the movement. So the way to uh, suggested exploring that is keeping your torso and head facing forwards. One hand goes behind your back, the other hand on the opposite knee, and then just allow yourself to rotate to engage your lumbar and only your lumbar. So that you feel what that feels like as you're doing some rotation, your vertebrae and your lumbar rotating and they come up to the ligamental tension quite quickly, maybe three, four, five percent of movement. 
And then from that place, which is now your thoracic lumbar junction, allow the rotation then to continue going up your spine, your lower spine, mid spine, upper spine and neck. And then recoil in the reverse order, your neck, upper spine, mid spine, lower spine, thoracic spine, and back to lumbar and back into looseness. And then just do that a number of times, seeing how it feels for you to move. No particular focus on where we're initiating the movement, just you doing the movement yourself. And then swap hands over. So your other hand is behind your back, your torso is, and head is still facing forwards, opposite hand on the opposite knee, and allow that rotational movement engaging your lumbar. And it will probably feel different because our facets each side are very different. And allow then that rotation when you feel the engagement of your lumbar to increase your lower thoracic, mid thoracic, upper thoracic, and neck. And then recoil. And doing that a number of times, feeling what that feels like for yourselves, and <clears throat> then just come back to facing forwards for a moment. So if you look at, and maybe you will want to do this as well with your hands. So if I do, if I do this, that kind of movement, that's, the, that's me contacting ligaments. So have a go with doing that. I don't know if you can see that sensation is ligaments. This sensation is me moving my muscles. This is joint space. And then this is the fluid in the joints. And then come back to that ligament. So that kind of tightness. That's just that sensation of ligaments. This is muscles, me moving. So we're, 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 we tend to predominate muscle-wise the way that we move. <clears throat> so coming back to doing this rotation, one arm behind your back, the other one on the opposite knee. And this time see if you can move, initiating the movement from your ligaments and seeing what feeling, sensing what that is like, knowing that your own internal wisdom will know what to do and what the sensations are and how to engage. So think about ligaments and there will be a sensation. Imagine if a rope had a sensation keeping up a tent and every time it got taut, there would be a different sensation of engagement. And seeing if you can do this incrementally as much as possible, lumbar, thoracic as you move up the spine. And then come back to a neutral position, swap hands over. And again, looking at engaging ligaments, what does that feel like for you? Initiating movement from your ligaments. That sensation may be more of purpose. Ligaments are there to keep your joints in the orientation that they're designed. They both support, but also restrict the movement of your joints. And then come back to neutral for a moment. So ligaments are ruled over by the liver. So your liver energy, really important. And decision making. So we have a decision. If we go back to the other side again now, think about deeply engaging your ligaments so that you have a, um, probably what I mean by deeply is that you have big sensations. 
be mindful so that you're engaging quite firmly the joints which are giving you big ligament sensations. So we have choices when we move. In fact, every time you move, it's really a choice, swapping sides over, feeling that sensation as you deeply engage the movement of your thoracic spine and all the associated ligaments. And then come back to neutral again for a little while, just feeling what that feels like. And again, have one hand behind your back. And this time, initiating your movement from your ligaments, but this time with kindness in your ligaments. And does that change now the way that you move? Does that change the way that you engage your ligaments via the movement of your bones and your spine? And maybe for you, the kindness is going to really support your understanding of how we can be with ourselves. It doesn't have to be, we can create tensions, but we don't have to be tense within our tensions. And then swapping sides over. So we're looking at how our choices are. How do I engage my ligaments? So this side, maybe look at choices, knowing that you can engage, you can back off, you can engage more deeply, you can engage more with kind of staccato kind of energy. Or you could engage with just real gentle, caring. It's just ways that we can explore differently the internal fabrics of our body. And then coming back to having your hands on your knees for a moment. <clears throat> and we've done, I'll just do a little bit more looking at the front of the spine and back of the spine as well. So we have our anterior longitudinal ligament that comes up the, from all the way from your coccyx all the way top of your spine. And if we were to remove that ligament, the longitudinal ligament, anterior one, our spine with concertina up. And if we were to move, remove the anterior, sorry, the posterior longitudinal ligament, our spine would collapse. So we've got this dira and sukha, this support, stability and ease. So let's do some, just some flexion, extension, flexion, like cow seated, but allowing that movement, see if you can initiate it deep down in your coccyx, the front of your spine, all the way up to the top of your spine. And just do your flexion and extension from that front of your spine, that anterior longitudinal ligament. So there's a lengthening in the extension and then the flexion, there'll be just a softening maybe at the front of your spine. So there's an innate energy within your spine that does want to create space. And then as you then fold, think about folding more and from the back of your spine, the posterior longitudinal ligament, and have start to gain a relationship between front of your spine that might be us moving forwards and the back of your spine, which might be a little bit more like retreating.
and directing the movement from your ligaments, having choices. And maybe the choice now would be to deeply engage as an exploration. All the ligaments, as much as possible, in front of your spine, deeply engaging the ligaments posteriorly, feeling more sensation. And then come back to kindness. And does that change the way that you move? And with your ligaments, kindness with the movement of your ligaments. And then just coming back to neutral for a while and feeling what that feels like for you. Just a quiet mind, just observing whatever there is to observe. And I'll pass it you back to Kate. <coughs> How's everyone doing? Thumbs up. Good. We've never had the thumbs down yet. It's really cool. <laughs> I suppose the thumbs down people just leave, don't they? <laughs> if there is. Okay. Great. So I want to just continue with exactly that choices and ligaments but in a slightly different position. So if you come on to sitting on your sit bones, if you can, with your legs wide. Can you see me okay? So you might want to just move any flesh from your buttocks and just really be sitting on those ischial tuberosities, those sit bones. So yeah, that sense of ligaments. If you bring your toes up, so your feet are flexed, so your feet are active. Open your awareness into the inside of your leg. This is where your liver meridian runs. And you might be aware of that ligament feeling, particularly around the knees. Just by having our feet in this flex position, we're activating the liver meridian. It starts on the inside of the big toe, goes between the, in the groove between the first and second toes, comes up inside the leg, inside the knee, and then up to the groin. It goes around the testes in men and around the cervix in women. And then it goes up to the side of our body. In Shiatsu, there's some stretches that are called makaho. Um, and they sort of mean moving forward. So as we go into the position, we're activating the meridians and we breathe in and we feel the tension maybe in that position. And as we breathe out, we soften and move forward. Makaho meaning moving forward, we relax into them more. So there's no perfect position. You just want to find a position where you are feeling the meridian. So just in this collection of our toes, activating our feet, we're feeling liver. But I'd like you to clasp your hands together, so your fingers together, and then stretch away, and then up. So we're going to create space in the, all those intercostal area, all between the ribs. So you don't want to flare in that flexion of the spine. You want to keep sitting down into your set, sit bones and keep your core strong, so you're not pushing your ribs forward. So dropping down into the ground, but also lifting up to so opening in the armpits, the elbows, the wrists. And think about the ligaments as you do this. And the space you can create as you lift upwards between your ribs. So the forward and back movements we were doing with Paul are quite common, but we don't often open out the sides of our body quite as much as we move forwards and backwards. So think about the sides of your body. And then turn to look at your left foot, so that same ligament stretch that we were doing, the twist. Just feel the twist, the different parts of your spine, just giving the organs a bit of a squeeze. Ligaments are activating. 
Take a breath in and on the out breath, relax your hands, unclasp them, bend towards your right leg. So you're bending over your right leg. And you're creating space all down the left side of your body. So your gallbladder meridian opening up to the sky. So just take some breaths here, breathing in. And you feel maybe the tension in that area as you breathe out, soften into it. Being kind if it feels tight, allowing the out breath to soften it with kindness. Just look after your neck. So your whole of your gallbladder meridian is activated from your fourth toe, the side of your neck, all up the side of your body, around your shoulder. Any areas of tension, just send your awareness there. Where the tension goes, the energy flows. Just think about that area and softening it with the out breath. And then come up nice and slowly. Clasp your hands the different way, the weird way that feels a bit weird. And then the same again, just sit down through your sit bones, lift up. Lift up, lift up. Think about all those individual ligaments and between your ribs, the intercostals. Creating space, lifting, opening the sides. Turn to look at your right leg foot. Breathing in, on and out breath, release your fingers and bend to the left. Opening your right side, might be tighter on this side, we're often different left to right, often tighter where the liver organ is. So as you breathe in, you might feel the areas of tension. As you breathe out, soften into those areas. And slowly come up. So as well as choices, it's deciding which way we go. The gallbladder meridian runs down the side of the body so we can choose which way we're going to go. Make a plan which way. This is decision making. The sides of the body give us that ability to choose. We're going to do another movement now which opens the body in a different way. It's just taking it to the opposites, are complementary to the Makaho. So we're going to drop our right toes to the ground and then walk our left hands, well, our hands around our left shoulder. Look over our left shoulder. So your right toes dropped in, you're walking your hands around and you're looking, twisting, feeling again in the torso, the ligament movement. Feeling that ligament energy. Enjoy the twist. And then come back and go the other way. So you're going to drop your left toe, walk around to the right with your hands, look over your right shoulder. And then come back. And we're going to go into the stretch we did the first time. And after having gone the opposite way, we might feel the stretch is easier. So um, we usually do. So we're just going to, without the stretch upwards, just bend nice and easily to the side. However, if you're up here or wherever you are, but you're opening again the right side of the body to the um, sky. Again, your out breath just allowing you to soften further into it. Does it feel easier? 
It might do. I always find that it does after that stretch, other the other movement. And then come up slowly and open. You're creating space between your ribs. Flexible like a tree. And then come up. And one thing we can do for our liver, if, our, if we've been drinking too much or our liver feels like it's having to work very hard um, to clear toxins, which is one of its physical functions, we can sound into the liver. So the sound that reverberates in the liver organ is a staccato sort of E, so it's E. So we can sort of tap like we were tapping to do the free flow, but also make this chanting sound. E. That's a really nice way for moving if we feel stuck or tight and the soreness in that under the rib hypochondria area to chant, use the sound to move the key as a, as a nice way of freeing up the key there. If you want to move forward just a little bit, that's quite nice to get that stretch on the inside of the knees as well, where the liver can get stuck. So if you want to move forward, just tight, just give it a little tap. If it feels easy, just move forward. Keep your feet to squeeze while they're here. Particularly in between your big toe and your second toe, just push your thumbs in there. If the stretch is getting too much, you can cut them, bring your legs. And bring, your, bring your thumb into this area between your big toe and your second toe. And just work your thumbs in there. Really good for bringing the energy down into your feet. Really good for headaches. So this point on the liver meridian here between the big toe and the second toe is a first aid point for cramping. So if we've got cramps in our muscles because the energy isn't free flowing, this is a really good point. Might be sore. Really good to work it, particularly if you're feeling ungrounded, you want to bring headache energy down. It's very sore on me. You can work all the way from the inside of the big toe down between that long. Just work your thumbs down between those bones. I'm doing it rather than showing it, but I'm sure you're all feeling the, feeling it. Good, how are you doing, Paul? Another way you can get in there is if you sit like this, you can get your fingers into the area between the big toe and the second toe. You can squeeze in like that. Are you guys good for going on another five, ten minutes or so? Yeah. Just a couple more things that um, I'd just like to follow on from that. Um, and um, then we go into a Shavasana at the end as well. Uh, but come back to kneeling just for a little while. Or if you're or sitting, if that was comfortable for you. <clears throat> just want to carry on that kind of... Um, relationship that we have with the liver and the gallbladder. So when we were doing the uh, rotation of the whole of the spine, lumbar, thoracic, 
your neck. And we were rotating from either the ligaments or we were doing it from kindness. So your gallbladder basically is um, underneath this whole portion here of the right lower part of your rib cage. You can probably just see it here. Some of it comes just below the rib cage. It's about, it weighs over a kilo, kilo and a half. It's a massive, big chunk of liver. <laughs> it's a big chunk of liver. So, um, and underneath you've got the gallbladder. Bonnie Bainbridge Cohen in the Body Mind Center even talks about the gallbladder giving lightness to the liver. So just a bit of exploration around that. If we look at doing this rotation, so the position is one hand behind your back, the other one on the opposite knee, still your torso and head facing forwards. And this time when we do the rotation, rotate, initiating that rotation movement from your liver. And how does that change the way that you're moving? What does that do? Don't forget, there's no right nor wrong with this. It's just our own different exploration around that. So moving from your liver, initiating that movement from your liver. And swapping sides over so that the rotation is going to be slightly different, but still initiating that movement from your liver as you rotate your lumbar, lower thoracic, mid thoracic, upper thoracic, neck, and then recoil. You can explore in so many different ways, rotation, but thinking about that, or initiating the movement from your liver. And then swapping hands over, and this time, Initiating the movement from your gallbladder, it doesn't matter if you don't know where it is, your own internal wisdom will. And initiating the movement from your gallbladder. This is your decision maker. The liver was your planner. and swapping sides over. Initiating the movement from your decision maker, your gallbladder. And then just come back to your hands on your legs just for a moment. And just take a few breaths into your liver and gallbladder. So breathing into that area, which is your lower right quadrant of your thoracic cage, the anterior part. Maybe you want to put your hand on this area as well. And maybe because I know that we've all been challenged in different ways with the emotions of wanting to plan and not being able to, having decisions that we need to make or not knowing how to make decisions, having decisions made for us. And the whole emotion of being angry, frustrated, confused, and maybe having your hand here, just giving some kindness to your liver and to your gallbladder. Just some nice kindness over and go better. Go deep into the middle of the fabric of your whole being as much as you can. Take that kindness from deep inside and allow that kindness to really support your planner, decision maker. And 
and give it some kindness from the inside out. And then with the same care and attention, find yourselves lying down <coughs> on your backs, a few minutes Shavasana together. Please make sure that you're comfy um, in terms of your <coughs> head neck position, maybe bolster under your knees, maybe a blanket put your jumper on just to keep your body temperature. Because although we haven't been really active, we've been creating lots of internal movement, lots of internal heat. And to start off while we're just lying down again, just take your awareness to your liver and gallbladder. And if it works for you, supporting the whole of that energy with your kindness to you, to your liver, to your gallbladder. Soft kindness. And then let that feeling of kindness move throughout your whole body. From your feet, toes, bones, ligaments, ankles, skin, knees, thighs, buttocks, pelvic girdle, lumbar, or sacrum lumbar, lower back, thoracic cage, arms, hand, head, brain, and just allow yourself now just to drift off as much as you can, no particular agenda, quiet, and allow yourself to drift in the that twilight zone before waking asleep. Really important place for us to have the skill to reside in. Just letting go, just being present. Quiet mind as much as possible. And then slowly just come back to senses. Your senses, that's a funny way to express that. Fear, uh, maybe just hearing the sounds, my voice, music in the background. Maybe you can hear the wind blowing here sounds more local to you in your room outside of your room or house and then feeling sensations maybe of your skin areas that are not covered over and gently opening your eyes but with a real soft glaze soft vision to start off with and then moving your hands and your feet. And with that same care and attention, come into the seated position. <clears throat> 